Hey guys, it's been a while since I uploaded a video, but I have been doing what I can to just keep up with comments and questions, you know, both here on YouTube and on Neato3000.com. Uh, recently, I ended up getting 500 subscriptions uh, and didn't even say thanks. So, uh, you know, what a guy, right? Uh, but thanks for that. Uh, you guys are awesome. And, you know, kind of in spirit of that, I've kind of looked over what the what, you know what this channel seems to be about and the main thing is just this uh, alternator motor controller uh, but there's a problem with this one I actually killed it <laughs> uh, this was a little bit ago with a uh, 50 volt power supply me and a buddy were uh, testing it out and we put together some battery packs uh, and ended up with uh, somewhere around 50 volts I think it was like 48 or something like that uh, but that wasn't the issue that the, the voltage that handled well, like the motor spun great. I wish I had a video of how well it worked. Uh, the problem happened to be, uh, we were using gator clips to connect everything up and one of them fell off somewhere and landed somewhere it shouldn't have and, uh, blew out these two guys. And, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on those and take a look and see this guy just completely cracked and this guy just lost his top <laughs> uh, lost a resistor there and you know just all kinds of nastiness all around in here uh, even the power got a little warm you can see there plenty of current went through where it shouldn't have but so it's been dead and I haven't really uh, messed with it too much just because why try to rebuild this specific device? Uh, main thing is, is it worked well. It was a good uh, prototype, a good will it work? Uh, you know, I was able to test and find out that I can switch these guys with another 555 timer as the pulsive modulation signal uh, on their reset lines in order to control a throttle. Uh, that was one of the main things with this specific board uh, and of course you know we've been using this little setup here for quite a while just running the you know as, as low side switches uh, letting the current from the alternators switch between the three poles and exit through the ground uh, this one though you know also another thing uh, had a comment talking about how it sounded like Chewbacca <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, it's true. I actually ended up with the, the capacitor and the uh, potentiometer values that I used. Uh, put it right around the same frequency. The pulse modulation signal was around the same frequency as the, the noise that Chewbacca makes. Uh, pretty hilarious. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's, I haven't really messed with this specific device in quite a while. Just because I killed it and thought maybe I could do something a little bit better than that so you know since we're up at that 500 subscriber range I figured well the heck you know what I'll just go ahead and I'll design something new maybe a little bit sleeker a little bit smaller a little bit fancier but basically the same thing what this does like I was saying you know we you got your uh, low side switches that we had from the other one Basically, the, the current comes in through here. These guys switch it out, and it comes out of our uh, ground out over here. And we've got all of our switching going on here with the 555 timers. Uh, you'll notice, though, one big difference is that I don't have those resistors in here anymore. I've replaced them with MOSFET drivers. And this is still going to end up being a prototype because I don't know if I need one MOSFET per or MOSFET driver per MOSFET. or if one will drive it. I mean, they say there's six amps max, which I hope that I don't end up drawing six amps. But uh, when I was running just the resistors, the 555 timers that were actually driving the MOSFETs were getting really warm. And when I was in a class, I was talking with a, a professor about it. And turns out that I was actually creating an RC circuit, which because you know the the inputs on these guys on the MOSFETs the gates are 
capacitive. And then I was putting the R, you know, the, the resistors in there, which made a little uh, RC circuit. And, uh, you know, I could be possibly messing things up with the uh, power factors and the phase and all that kind of stuff. And I might just be having some bad kickback or something to that extent that's actually warming up the uh, 555 timers. But... I mean, it worked. It's just that they got a little warm. I guess I could have put heat sinks on them and just ran it like that. But uh, since I had, you know, the ability, I just went ahead and switched over to some MOSFET drivers, and we'll see how that works. Uh, but yeah, it's basically the same thing. Although I did change out the uh, capacitor. This isn't all soldered up yet. I think that I need to redo this one. Uh, re uh, recalculate the value for this guy. Uh, because I think I set it up for a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and uh, that would mean that this value because I'm trying to get it around the 20 kilohertz range you know out of hearing that way then it's nice and quiet uh, so I just need to make sure because I you know looking at this old this old board here it's a uh, a 5k so I should probably double check my numbers and make sure that I've got the right value there. Otherwise, I'll end up with something that doesn't work or is noisy. But yeah, just a little preview of that. I haven't soldered it together yet. Yeah. That should be the next thing to go on here. But, and really, I thought that these were going to be a great idea, but it's actually kind of a pain in the butt to make them. Uh, you know, it's easy to cut the, you know, cut out the length of the angle that you need but putting these holes here I ended up just drilling massive holes you can't really see what they uh, or how big the holes are on these with these nuts in the way but they're rather large that way then I could just let the MOSFETs settle into the right place and then they could settle into the right place and then I could find you know go ahead and tighten it all down and it looks like they're all lined up really nicely but they're it's just all because there's large holes where they're mounted but other than that it's gonna be pretty interesting I'm hoping that it'll handle everything one main deal is just the uh, the ground wait I don't know if you can see the ground plane there but you know I've kind of sectioned off this area you can see the line here kind of separates the logic stuff from the actual power section I don't know if it's gonna matter much I mean they obviously have to have that so but I'm just hoping that that actually keeps it from you know crosstalk I don't know if that's a real thing or not but I'd rather not have you know ground signals coming across from here you know high current ground signals coming from here to here across these logic devices so I kind of just blocked that off so that, that doesn't happen. But that's pretty much it for now. I just wanted to throw up together a uh, little quick video, show you guys what I'm actually working on. And uh, I've also got another piece of this that I need to put together. It's the, uh, I've got an alternator, a brand new one. It's the same model as the one that I've been using, uh, but it's you know brand new in the box. So that's another thing is I got to go into that, tear it apart, put in the uh, right pieces or, you know, take out the uh, the regulator and the diodes because we don't need those and then go ahead and put in the Hall effect sensors and then solder together the common and uh, add some leads to it. But that would be for another video. This was just to show what I've been working on and, uh, you know, just to say I've got a couple other extra ones as well. So... That may be something that we can try to, you know, if anybody's interested. I've also got the Gerber files and all that stuff. If you're interested, I can shoot them your way, you know, after I've gone and tested this. If it doesn't work, I'm not going to give out the, the Gerber files. That would just be nonsense. But, uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. The uh, Oh, yeah, uh, one other thing was that this was uh, designed in Eagle and printed by JLC PCB took them less time it actually took less time to get here than they said it would in, in the quote that was kind of nice uh the only problem i actually had was that these holes 
you know, they're the same all the way around for those mounting holes. But uh, they ended up being smaller than their own tolerance. So that was a little... But it worked out because I was able to put these screws in without nuts on the back. And, you know, just by uh, threading the, you know, the holes. And I could just put those in there, you know, screw them down. And it was good to go. But other than that, okay, now for real, that's the end of the video. But, uh, you know, thanks for all the subscriptions. It's been really nice. Uh, I'll see about keeping on this guy and actually get it up and running. So, you know, keep answering you guys' questions. And, uh, you know, please just keep on commenting questions and stuff like that. All right, well, you know, again, thanks a lot. You guys have a good one.